which we'll call the uh, Monday, December 20th, regularly uh, scheduled select board meeting order. We've got Flo Smith, Dave Sawyer, Brad Town, myself, Justin Lawrence for the board present. John's joining now. John Quinn is joining us now. Uh, for additions and changes to the agenda, we're going to put the listers' errors and omissions before the uh, fire department budget presentation. Anything else? Okay. Uh, public comment. All right. Hearing none. Uh, subdivision road name request with Ellen Moody. Yep. Hey. Um, so, uh, yeah. No, this is uh, again. It's in your package. It's uh, it's just a request. We run the run the name through through the state or and the 911 obviously for any any conflicts and it's come back with, with no conflicts as well. So. Okay. So the subdivision's all approved, everything's all set. Uh, now we're just looking for the approval on the private road name. That's it. Move to approve the uh, naming of the private road, Chartrand Lane. Second. All right. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you. Thanks for being here. All right. Uh, we have on the agenda Jerry Diamatidis for appointment as alternate delegate to CV Fiber Governing Board. Um, now, Jerry. I I'd move the approval of uh, Jerry DiMatidis to the CV Fiber Board. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Peace. Capital City GMC Volkswagen Mazda development improvements on Marvin and Goodnow Roads. Yeah, that's the sketch that's in your package there. The yeah. mm -hmm. And. Yeah. Uh, my, my name is Jeff Oleski with Private Map Consulting Engineers. I'm uh, a civil engineer for the project. Yep. And uh, happy to give a brief presentation if it pleases the board uh, about what we're looking to do here. I don't think it would hurt. Okay. I think that would be great. Uh, does everybody have a copy of the in front of them? I do have a full size set here. I've got a set as well if we need it. Okay. Uh, you know, long story short, this has uh, been a ways in making, but this was um, a site development and redevelopment uh, for new uh, Volkswagen. Uh, Mazda car dealership uh, to be located directly across from the existing Capital City GMC facility. Uh, the Development Review Board approved this uh, just about a year ago, actually, um, and it was put on hold mainly due to COVID for a while um, from a permitting standpoint with the state and whatnot. And just late uh, summer, fall, we are getting the permit process up and ramping again in, in, in the throes of the state permitting. And one of the conditions of the VRB approval is obviously to get the roadway improvements um, you know, approved by the stuff board here. So what we're really talking about is two sections of road. Uh, one, the primary section being Marvin Road from the intersection of Route 2 to the intersection of Goodnow Road. That's an existing gravel drive that kind of has an awkward intersection with Route 2 right now. It's kind of a steep incline up to Route 2. And it's also kind of an acute angle. It kind of forks in right now. Um, so the improvements to Marvin Road would include um, changing both the alignment of the intersection of how Marvin Road it keys into uh, Route 2 to provide um, a better approach and sight distance directions in either direction on Route 2, as well as getting, a, or we're going to be filling quite a bit of the approach to Marvin Road. Some areas come up, I think, three or four feet. Um, there's some profile uh, and elevations and road profiles in the, in the design plan set. Um, so essentially, it wouldn't be such a steep incline. They'd be feathered out over a couple hundred feet. Um, and then we're also widening the road to a full 24 feet wide and paving it. Um, uh, and in addition, and that gets paved pretty much just past the intersection of Marvin Road and Goodnow Road. So Goodnow Road tees into Marvin Road, just kind of past the site development. Uh, and then the second component is we are actually also um, improving and widening and paving a small section of Goodnow Road uh, as well, essentially from the intersection of Martin Road to just past the curb cutter access uh, to a remote parking lot that is designed and permitted for to support this development. Um, 
we came in uh, maybe a week or two ago, and met, uh, myself, I met with Tom, Vince, as well as Tim Davis, I believe, um, and just kind of go over and review the project, get it fresh in everybody's minds. Um, I think Tim was generally in favor of the project. He had a couple questions about culverts. We are um, upgrading and improving the cul three culverts that cross two that cross Arden Road and one that crosses Goodnow Road, just as um, A, to increase the size of the capacity of them and, and improve them before they get paid over, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, the whole project will obviously be paid for privately as part of the, the, this redevelopment project here. Um, we think there's quite a few benefits um, from a safety standpoint, from a traffic flow standpoint. Um, and uh, I guess the only thing I'll mention is in addition to the local approval, we also do have a preliminary approval from the Agency of Transportation on the roadway improvements as far as the intersection, the Route 2, and the things that we're looking to do within the state right away. Um, so I guess I'll go back and turn over to the board for any questions. I just had one. Was there anything with uh, wetlands? Because it seemed like that spot off of Goodnow to the right of Goodnow was kind of wet down in there. Yeah, so there, there's a significant class to wetland, um, you know, essentially to the northwest of the two remote parking lots that you see there on the plan. Um, there's some minor impacts, uh, the removal of a wastewater system that's currently in the buffer. Um, but uh, the wetlands were delineated. There was a state wetlands permit applied for and approved. Um, that's all kind of been uh, resolved with the state as far as that's concerned. So. Now, one other thing I'm just thinking about too, um, one other improvement we're making is right now there's really no intersection control as Goodnow Road tees into Marvin Road. As part of the project, we're proposing a stop sign to be placed at, as Goodnow Road tees into Marvin Road. So that'll stop any potential conflicts and give Marvin Road the right away, so to speak. Now, what will the impact be on the residents up in that area when the construction is taking place? Yeah, and that was obviously something that we um, spent quite a bit of time with. Um, there was quite a bit of neighbor involvement when we went to the DRB review process. Um, there were some, some of these improvements that actually came from some of the discussions with the neighbors. Um, there's some additional security measures that are, are being put in place um, to kind of prevent uh, additional traffic. So as an example, I, I think everybody was comfortable with the and again, uh, the layout's kind of unique. So there's a building right now on the existing parking lot across from Capital C GMC. So that darker shaded box will be the proposed building. The two slightly the kind of awkward uh, gray shaded areas off of Marvin Road, Goodnow Road are just parking lots, inventory parking lots. And there was some concern about traffic just back and forth through there and whatnot. And um, so ultimately the concession was the, the remote parking lot on Goodnow Road to be accessed off of Goodnow Road is not only inventory only, but it's actually a, a, a gated secure facility so that um, you know clients or customers looking for a new car can't keep driving up and down Goodnow Road or pulling into that parking lot. Only staff of the facility would be able to get in and out of there and pull inventory out as they need. Um, so that was you know really the amount of traffic that we generated in any day that was pretty minimal once the lots are stopped. Um, you know, there's one or two cars, they want someone off a test drive or something, they'll pull out, but it's not going to be a, a high volume thing. Most of the real traffic will be cars going in and out of the facility directly off of Route 2. There is a curb cut directly off of Route 2 as well, um, as far as service customers and, and potential clients. So. Are there any concerns about this remote lot that you have here in the shotgun club? Because I know they got a screen, but I don't think it goes that far over. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, uh, the shotgun club is still quite a few hundred yards away, I think, at least at a minimum. Um, you know, the uh, RHTL has owned both of these properties, the 40 Goodnow Road and the 12 Marvin Road lot for quite a few years now, I think. And um, they've even, we've gotten temporary approval of park cars in this Goodnow Road area, not in a field, um, historically over the last couple of years already. So I, I think they're comfortable with having an inventory there. <laughs> okay, uh, just because I know that, that that screen that they put up when they've got the the skeet shoot, it doesn't cover yeah. that lot over there. That's why I just, as long as you guys have addressed that. Yeah, and they're aware of it. I mean, certainly if, if it becomes an issue, I'm, I'm sure they'll have to do something either internal on site to resolve it or work with the gun club to come up with a remedy. But I, I, they've, they've kept cars there at least during the summer months for the last few years, and I don't think they've had any issue with in, in that, so. Does the board have any other questions? I don't. You, Brad? Mm -hmm. Everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. 
Thank you. Yeah, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, Dodge Farm Road review and update. Okay, so we got a pretty pretty full package there. Um, have a good night, Jeff. Thank, Thank you. you. This was developed from the acceptance and reclassification highway policy that we did just previously, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. So we used Dodge Fire Road kind of as an example as well. Um, Tim and I went up and walked it with uh, Robert and Ms. Haskins and um, com compared that to this report, this acceptance policy, excuse me, um, and made notes that you'll see on the first page in, in red there uh, um, of the findings. Uh, so there are there are a few things, and they, they were well aware, and, and we, we walked through it and talked through it. Some of the culvert cleaning and uh, you know some of the grading and, and things like that. So there's pictures in there of, of each of the issues that, that we had found uh, during that. So this kind of uh, walks you through it and documents it. And in addition to that, you'll also find where it meets the uh, town requirements based on the Chenette Associates report. That's also attached in there for information for the construction of the road and, and their recent uh, review of that as well is included in the report for information as part of that. And in fairness to Ms. Haskins, they haven't seen this report yet. We want to present it to the board first um, for any comments uh, or, or questions. I'm sure she'll have one when she leaves tonight. <laughs> So where are we, I mean. So ba basically, um, I'll quickly walk you through this, right? The stuff in blue, there's really no comment, um, no requirements. Anything in red is, is either to be determined or, or discussed. For example, is there a fee for taking over the road? You know, that's not in our highway policy yet. It hasn't been determined. Mm -hmm. So that, that's something that'll need to be determined. Um, Performance bond at this point, they're not constructing anything, so that would be NA in this particular case. Uh, the inspection, that would, the final inspection would still be required after the preliminary, after the work is done, obviously, and com completed, that needs to bring it up to the standards. Right? We're at a completion deadline. Again, they haven't had a chance to, to see what's required yet, so we haven't even talked about a date mm -hmm. um, for that yet, so that would still need to be uh, determined. Um, everything else is, is pretty straightforward, you know, with regards to referencing a policy for acceptance and conveyance, that's all pretty clear. Mm -hmm. um, the right of way and, and traveled way width is defined uh, and in line with things. Um, on section 16, there's one location um, from a visibility standpoint where there's some trees on that corner radius about halfway up. Uh, we may have to um, Tim will probably end up having to take a measurement to see because there is a 50 foot requirement there um, for that. So we, we don't know that dimension yet. So that has to be measured. Right. Uh, section 22, um, this is this will be a, a, a probably a point of discussion um, whether or not the town is going to ask for the road to be paid. Mm -hmm. right? Based on the, on the policy that we've set in place, the requirements are if it is adjoining a paved road, which it is, um, it would be required to be paved. And from the conversations we've had with Tim, if it's not paved, it can cause... It would be more maintenance, right? More maintenance and right. more grading, mm -hmm. gravel, mm -hmm. and so on. And it has been determined under Section 25 that additional culvert work will be required? Yep, yep, yep. we looked at that through the walkthrough as well. And that's that's detailed in here where that is. There's there's photos in there that show okay. the areas um, that they're referred to as well. And 29, that um, safety visibility is is a duplicate item really of the- um, 16. The 16, 16 for the tree. Mm -hmm. yep. It needs to be looked at for 50 feet. We haven't had an opportunity to view this, obviously. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to take a quick look and see if you have any questions. If anything pops in your mind while you're sitting here. I don't get my copy. Okay. 
I had her name written on it all the time. Anyway, just suspect that she might. This is uh, Ray Sear. Ray Sear is a homeowner as of today, lot number 11. Um, I guess one of the questions, or one of the questions I had was, we started this process about a year ago, and it was on the table and in front of the board, and we worked with the board to what had to be done. And at that time, uh, paving requirement wasn't part of the conversation, and I don't know if is that part of the new policy? Is it is it part of the existing policy, or is it uh, going to be adopted in the new policy? And I would just like us to be given consideration to possibly be grandfathered in because we started this process a year ago, and we we did everything we were asked to do right up until this point. I'd like that to be considered. Okay. So, as far as the policy we just adopted, um, mm -hmm. we'll definitely take a look at that. We didn't. We had in our developments in the pre previously, I believe we had required paving um, always. Yep. But I don't know about the formal policy, so we can have a discussion on that. And mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing that to us. Alberta. Was there anything about that in the uh, in the subdivision for that property up through there about the roads? Um, in the subdivision, it just it states that the homeowners are. It, it talks about maintenance by the homeowners and how it's we're equally responsible. Yeah. Okay. Know if that's your question. But nothing about requiring that subdivision to be paid. No. Oh. no. back on the agenda um, you can take a moment go through the packet the board uh, we'll also go through look at the policy look at you know potential grandfathering like you had requested um, and the next time we get together I would suppose we'd be able to get some sort of closure on this I would hope um, mm -hmm. at least as far as direction and what the board's position is on on how to move forward and then from there you know you'll be able, well, you'll be able to ask your questions as well and it's been going on for a year, so it would be good to think we finally have enough information in front of us to make a decision. Justin, I have a couple thoughts Go ahead. Um, and, a, and a question. Um, normally, I'm opposed to taking over road, private roads. Right. Um, usually, it's just a, a shift to the greater taxpayer, but there are a lot of uh, properties here that we're talking about. I think, uh, Roberta, is there nine total there properties are, here that are? Yes, there are eight existing and one to be built in 2022, so it will be a total of nine. Right, but, okay, and, and that's that's total, right? There's no more uh, uh, about, about, about after, after that, that, right? Correct, all the, all the lots of those. Okay. okay. Um, 
my, you know, my general thought is, is, you know, this is a fairly good sized subdivision. Um, and they've, you know, I've, I've been here for the year that Roberta has been coming in and talking about this. And it seems, it seems like a good thing for the town to take over. Um, I'm not sure that, you know, given the road that it's the best idea to pave that road, you know, some roads are better off left to be dirt. Um, it's not necessarily a uh, maintenance savings to pave the road long term. And I think that's one of the things that the board needs to think about whether or not, you know, the, you know, just because it's paved right now doesn't mean it, it won't break up three or four years from now, depending on um, a number of things, right? So it's just something for the board to think about. Not all roads are meant to be paved or not all, all roads should be paved. Right. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So when when do we think this will be on again? We'll probably get on the second meeting in June, right? Is that if you like? Second meeting in January. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Yeah. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm on. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lister's error and emissions presentation. Hi. Hi, good evening. Hi. I think you have I think you have my summary in front of you. Um, every year at this time, the state requires that um, we present to the select board uh, any errors and omissions that were made in the grand list during the course of the year. These do not involve grievances, it's just simply errors that happen for one reason or another. So, um, and we are permitted to, to fix them before the end of the year. So, I, I categorize these into two pages. The first page are personal property changes, and Diane handles these. And what happens on occasion is that a company closes, and I don't know that, so I'm sending them a bill based on what they had re reported a year before. And that's the majority of these. But then there was another one with AutoZone, and um, I just misread their report. Okay, so, so we you know, went through the calculation on that. So those are the changes. Like I say, the majority of them are companies who are no longer in Greenland, and I just didn't know that. Because a lot of these companies might have a presence at Walmart, or other stores, so we're not familiar with the names. And the second page is the um, changes that involve uh, our not personal property, but real estate. And I'll, I have an explanation. I can go through it briefly. Um, the Capital City Grange, uh, when when the bill went out in July, um, both the municipal and school taxes were exempted. And that was in error because the town meeting vote in March had only exempted the municipal tax. So therefore, we had to send a bill out to them, revised bill, which then included the school tax. Um, the second one is the Berlin Mall, the, actually the new senior facility that's next to the mall. And when we sent the tax bills out, um, there was a stabilization agreement which had not been finalized on the property. So in October, the agreement was signed. So we had to reduce the municipal tax. Um, the first year, they're being taxed at 10% of the value of the improvements. 
and then each year it it um, goes up. There'll be that's I, think, I don't know the exact amount, maybe twenty and forty and sixty over the course five of five years. years. So um, because this it was to take effect this year, we had to reduce that municipal tax on the improvements. And the calculation is there that um, both Diane and I have gone over. So that's just, um, that's in tax dollars. Um, the remaining uh, two are the errors and emissions represent assessment issues. Uh, for Bechtel Residential, uh, back in 2008 when they did the reval, they set up a parcel which um, included the a value on all the approvals they had on the condos. There were 12 approvals that were just there. There was no buildings. It, they were just approved. And um, there was a parcel set up to capture the value of these approvals. And they were between uh, probably twenty-five dollars and $30,000 each. So after 2008, nothing really happened there for 10 years. The property transferred from Heaney to Fecto, and then Fe Jim Fecto started uh, building the units. And we, Tom and I, in the office now, we were not aware of this parcel that had been set up in 2008, which included the approval um, assessments. So for uh, Jim started selling the units, I think, 18, in 2018, 19, and 20. Over that period of time, they were sold. As of this year, he has no approvals left for the project. He has built them all out. And they're all assessed separately. The last few are not complete, but they still have separate assessments on them. So as a result, he should have no he should not have a tax bill this year on this parcel because he, going forward, he has no more approvals to build. And it was just an oversight because we didn't know the parcel was sitting there from 2008 and over the 10 year period, you know, it just was overlooked. So they hadn't, had they been paying taxes on that? Yes, yes. Okay. They've been paying taxes all along, but uh, this year, um, Jim Fecto came in and he suddenly realized the parcel was there. So we sat down and went over everything, and um, like I said, as of this year, there are no approvals left, so he should not be getting the tax bill. And then there was a significant decrease in the AutoZone property? Uh, that's the personal property. That's 82000 you know, that's... That's the total. That would be the grand list total. You divide know, yeah. that by 100. Yeah. But what yeah. they did is when they reported, they're supposed to report the net depreciated value, they gave me the whole cost. And I didn't know that at the time. So then we sent the tax bill out and I said, well, wait a minute, why, why didn't you give me the net depreciated value? I said, well, you're supposed to give that to me. And they had not. So um, again, I, the facto uh, is an assessment. So that, again, will be divided by 100. Yeah. It's not the exact yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the last uh, one is, um, it's some acreage. And what we had down is an old mobile home as of April 1st. The property sold in July. The new owner informed us that the mobile home was gone. So we drove up and um, onto Murray Road, which was not an easy drive. And we found the site where the mobile home was. And it, it obviously had been gone for a while because the weeds had grown up on the site. And um, there's, still, there's still water and sewer there. So that will remain on the assessment. But the mobile home was only assessed at 2700 So we took that off for this year. So I can answer any questions if anybody has any questions.
Hey, buddy. I don't have any, but thank you. The detail is great. Well, it's just for you to see it ahead of time mm -hmm. makes it a little easier. Absolutely. Than, uh, me just talking here and, and not having a little bit of, of backup for your efforts. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. All right, uh, fire department budget presentation. You guys want to come up closer so we can hear you? Or you, can, you good? I can hear you. All right, good. So I don't know if you want to go through the whole thing or I can pull out the highlights. Why don't you just tell us whatever it is you want to share? All right. So what we're looking at right now is a $40,000 increase to the budget of last year. What that is coming from is we are going to implement a weekend shift, paid shift, both Saturday and Sunday. That's going to put people in the station for a period of time, able to do the maintenance, um, some little admin work, training, and respond to calls. We're also increasing the stipend program by $10,000. All right, but let me go back to the weekend shifts. That's $25,000. That's gonna be 16 hours, four people for the weekend. The stipend program is being increased by $10,000. That right there is going to be uh, for your Tuesday night trainings, work sessions, um, and all your fire calls is where the stipend program is used. We then also increased the capital replacement, and that's trucks, buildings, anything to do with, um, well, capital replacement. That could be anything. We typically think about that line item as, as trucks, big ticket items. And we increased that by $10,000. We are also looking at this year coming um, for an audit, and that's another $3,000 on the accounting line item. So just those alone is $48,000. So we have taken $8,000 and shaved it off the rest of our line items. So instead of $48,000, you're looking at $40,000. Now, if you want to talk about the weekend shifts, and the increases of which, short of the accounting. The, the survey that was put out, regardless of the number of the people that responded, there were certain things that they felt was important. One was trained personnel, um, good equipment, and being able to respond, um, have a quicker response. Now, I believe that these line items that we increased is, is addressing those. Um, the capital replacement is not where it probably should be. Okay, but you know, that is, it was still increased to something that, you know, I, I think is not as hard of a hit to, to the community. Um, and as far as the, the weekend duty, shifts, um, you're going to have two people, you're going to have the ability to have one-on-one -on -one training, I don't care if that is uh, maintenance to trucks, where some of the older folks can train the younger guys on what they should be doing and looking for it while maintaining these trucks. I have some questions. Go ahead, John. What's the stipend for the weekend or what's the hourly wage? The hourly wage is $20 before taxes. And so that 25,000 is also encompassing uh, some of the taxes and the extra um, in the workers comp. How many, how many people per, per shift on the weekend? You're going to have 16 hours, four people, um, 16 man hours each weekend. How many calls did we miss on the weekend? In this we don't, 
We don't miss calls. Okay. How many calls um, had an average th than slower response time? Meaning, like, you know, everyone wants a faster response time when their house is burning, right? Like, it's only fair to, you know, to think that, right? At what point, I mean, what it sounds like is you're working towards a full-time full -time, uh, fire department slowly. So right now, does your duty officer on the weekends get paid? No. How many times a month do you meet? Four, is that right? Unless you got five Tuesdays in a month, yes. Right. And so the stipend increase, I'm assuming that's for recruitment? That is to uh, keep the, the active volunteers of which we have. Um, yeah, it's retention. You think they do it for the money? the money? Not initially. It's, 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 it's not, it's not a, a derogatory thing one way or the other. other. Um, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a true it's a question. question. You know, you some, know people, some people, you know, it's you know, great to have, have that extra money. money. They, they save it, save it. You know, you know, know through after Christmas. Christmas. Um, um, there's a number of reasons why you do it. I'm just wondering, like, are these things really going to make a difference? Right? Right? Like, they're nice to have, or they must have in order to run your fire department effectively. And I'm not, I'm not sure. sure. I'm not I'm sure not I've heard sure anything, anything that, that, leaves, that leads me to believe that, that, that you know, these, you know, things, these are things are going to change anything, anything that's going, that's going on, on except, except for you know, spending, spending a little, a little, bit, a little more bit more money. Okay, so <clears throat> what the things, some of the things I think uh, my takeaway on what we learned from our weekends is how much time and effort in the maintenance as well as the administrative end of it and yeah so if we move to a different model and there might be at some point um, a paid position or one and a half whatever that is to be determined um, we got to we got to track to see how many hours that might actually be to determine that position and the hours required um, so that's a, a takeaway as well from this. One of the advantages to having people paid in this station for basically four hours a day, two of them four hours a day on the weekends, is it will enable us to have more maintenance time on the equipment by those people and free up time, maintenance and other work time, so on and so forth. And it'll enable us to free up time on those Tuesday nights where we can increase our training level, which is one of the goals that the community survey identified. So you, so you okay, so the, so the community survey didn't identify really what you did for training, right? So me as Joe Citizen doesn't know, doesn't have any idea what you do for training, right? It's always great to have more training. It's always great to have a faster response time. I, I, I won't debate with you about either one of those things, but your survey didn't really get to the, to the meat of educating people on what it is that actually happens and how many hours you're actually training a year. How many hours does each individual get? Like, so you meet four times a month unless if there's a fifth Tuesday, right? So two of those are business meetings, two of those are trainings, is that correct? No, we have a business meeting, a work session, a training and equipment maintenance. We could double the amount of training by taking the equipment maintenance and putting it on weekends. Right. How many calls a year do you get? Right now, the department is Fire. averaging Fire. 
250 to 300 fire calls a year and a like number of EMS. 300. So that could be off a little bit, but Northfield does about 150 calls for fire department a year and they train once a month. Right? So you guys are training way more than they are. You have more than double, about double their calls. Um, <laughs> I'm just, just not sold on the, on the reasoning here yet, guys. Yes, it frees up time for more training, right? What are you, what are you going to do besides pump water? Like, what are the training activities? Educate us on what it is that you do in a training from week to week. Like, how many weeks is it just pumping water and testing equipment and going through the normal process? And how many weeks are you, you know, smoking up a trailer and, you know, crawling through it? So I think, I think what he's at, what you're asking for is what is to carry us, uh, is like what their actual training path is. Yeah, no, so, so more training is great, but if it's just pumping water, right? If it's just, there's only so much you can get out of that. And you know, I'm just, I'm just looking at it like. So, so you guys have a training. What are we getting here? You guys must have a training path, right? We have a training schedule, yes, um, that, you know, goes through the year. The, there's an initial fire training that's put on by the uh, State of Vermont um, Fire Service Academy, which is Are Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2 level training, which, um, Janet, you're more recent on the numbers for the number of hours. But guys, but guys those are, but aren't the, included. Those aren't your Tuesday night meetings. I've done the Firefighter 1. I've done the 100 and whatever the, hours, 85 hours. Those aren't those aren't the hours you're talking about. So I'm just, I'm trying to understand what what it is on the Tuesday nights that you, how it is that you guys train. Like, when, what is it? that once, we're getting for this additional cost. Once you have that qualification level of Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2, you have to meet a certain number of hours and a certain range of training to maintain your qualification. The um, different categories include first aid CPR, hazardous materials training, our minimum requirements and then you have to have a certain number of hours which we include as you said was uh, building rescue type training water movement fire streams water supply then there's um, also training for um, vehicle rescue and extrication we have other stuff such as fire alarms in town, significant number. They, re they require training so that people know what they're doing on the fire alarms. Uh, Those are required I'm, by Firefighter 1? You need to cover pretty much everything there is in Firefighter 1 or Firefighter 2. Okay. And you need to hit those subjects that are in firefighter one firefighter two each year the hazmat you have to have a refresher every year the cpr you have to qualify every year and have a first aid every year and then the rest you you need to cover with the 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 breakdown that the department determines is necessary so this, so I, I just want to compare apples to apples, right? This is no different than East Montpelier, Northfield, Williamstown, Randolph, for their firefighter one, the classes that they have to do, right? Statewide. It's, it statewide. is statewide. And I get, I get they're packing more and more into it and they're re requiring more and more out of our volunteers. I'm not trying to, you know, degrade, um, what's going on or anything like that. But my, I guess my point in the end is like these departments for the most part are meeting once a month and meeting those qualifications. We're meeting, you know, a lot more than that. And you guys are asking for an extra $35,000 if I wrote it down right, 25 for the weekends and 
10 for the stipends to not the reason when I know John actually meets weekly, not just monthly. Northfield meets weekly? From what I understand. No. <clears throat> the um they train once a month. But there is the other real go ahead, John. So uh, currently, John, we train once a month. You know, part of it is, you know, the that's other. That's her. So if that's true, that's, that's, that's great. And I'm really, you know, I'm not understanding. I guess that's my point is I'm, I'm not understanding. You guys meet every week, but you're only training once a month. So that's new to me because I thought you were training at least twice a, twice a month and business meetings the other two weeks. Well, there, there's a, a night set aside for maintenance. There's a, set, a, set, a night set aside for, you know, truck and equipment. Um, so that leaves one night the month, you know, in the month to do the actual training. Now, what really drives people, your responders, if you want to keep them in retention, you know, it, it's, about, it's about training. You know, digging out um, drains for a work session is not gonna keep people excited. Now, throwing ladders, flowing water, cutting cars, first aid, all that, that keeps people excited. That keeps, you know, that that's part of retention in the fire service. That's. I, yeah. I, under, I just wanna say something here, just cause I'm looking at these numbers and I'm looking and I'm hearing, hearing what you're saying and what John's saying as well. And if, if in this budget, and maybe I'm reading things wrong here, but it looks to me like this stipend increase is about a 33% increase over prior years with less manpower, volunteers than what we had. And if you're looking for this 25,000 for a weekend thing, and I'm hearing on this demand the station, they're not gonna be out on calls that whole period of time. So if they were doing they were doing truck maintenance and stuff like that, that's gonna open the opportunity for two trainings a month without increasing this stipend uh, at 33%. Because personally, I'm looking at a, a, a total increase of about 11% and you know, 33% on stipends and other 33% on capital and replacement. I would, I would more intend to go for the 33% on capital replacement because we don't wanna be, getting hit with a big bill for equipment down the road and stuff like that, so I could see budgeting for that. I'm having a hard time swallowing this number added at 33% for stipends when your volunteers are down, and that, I'm, that's just me personally. What I agree again. One of the things we did over the past couple of years is uh, last year the select board asked us if we could cut the budget by a significant amount. <clears throat> Um, the goal to cut the budget was the 10% cut last year. We managed a 8.4% cut in our budget from 2020 to 2021. <clears throat> if you look at it over a longer term, over a couple of years, this is not a 10% increase. Um, it, it's more in line with a 5% increase if you're going over yeah, I, a I, yeah, I can't look at it like that. I got to look at a budget that was approved last year, and then you're telling me you're looking for 11 percent more this year. I always, I always hate to talk about this type of <laughs> stuff because because it penalizes the people that do good work. And I want to recognize the Berlin Fire Department for you know coming up with a a good cut last year. But what I see is, you know, a bunch of nice to haves. And an eight percent or an eight thousand dollar reduction, which means on. So if you just took away the nice to haves, you found an extra eight k on your budget. I don't know what percentage that is in front of me. Um, that you were able to cut out of this year's budget. So if if you just took the eight k away, you didn't do stipend increases or or weekend shifts. You increased your capital uh, budget and your you know. The audit that you need to have because you're not part of the town, you know, you're looking at not much of an increase at all there, if any. Um, and, you know, it, it leads me to believe 
what you did truthfully was right size. And I appreciate that. And I think, you know, all the taxpayers will appreciate that. But you guys didn't slash and burn last year. That's my feeling. Go ahead, Jerry. I, I, I attend quite a few of the meetings and I've worked on the budget for a number of years here as the uh, town delegate to the board for the fire department. And uh, th this, th what, they're, what they're trying to do here is a little bit different than has been done in previous budgets because we, we the fire department took almost a two-year effort now to try to address retention problems and try to focus on the, fu the future of the fire department, actually having a fire department that is volunteer or some form of hybrid. And it's extremely difficult to maintain volunteers at the level that you need to do in order to be a firefighter. It's ex it, this, you know, the, the, the model that this department uh, came up on is as old as I am. And there's been quite a lot of changes in, in what happens in families and in homes to allow volunteers at that level. And it's extremely difficult. And this is a, a first step, almost an experiment, if you will, to see if doing some paid shift work will increase retention and actually get additional work done that needs to be done for the fire department. So I, I realize that, that, yes, it's paying more money than was paid last year, but it's also trying to address a trend that hasn't been addressed, and that, and that is the difficulty of getting volunteers at the level that you need. You know, our response times and the number of respondents are well below uh, standards for, for rural towns of our size. And the, that's, that's a problem. How much more can you slip? Um, so this was meant to address that in a small step to see if it'll work and, of course, to see if it meets the pleasure of the board. No question. I think ultimately uh, one of the questions that John may be getting to or asking or that, that is kind of up in the air that we'd like to have answered is, I mean, it is. What, are we, what would the taxpayers get for this investment, so to speak, in the fire department? Because I don't think anybody can argue that you guys do a fantastic job. I know this is... Is, is more of a, uh, an attempt to um, kind of bring it up to the, a level of a, another standard or another level of, of protection for the community. Um, and I think some of the questions that are in mind for me are, you know, what would we exactly be getting for this, this sort of investment from the taxpayers? And, and that's kind of an unknown and not guaranteed. So have you guys, when I asked previously about a training or a development model, um, or, or what exactly that extra funding looks like and how it impacts the department. Are you prepared to speak to that at all? Like, would you have an actual training track that, 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 we, that we would know that this is where your requirements are, this is where, um, this is the level that our responders are going to be performing to, this is where they're going to be? I mean, because it's great, we can put this in there and say, because of this, we can do better training, or because of this, we're going to have a better caliber or quality firefighter on, on our team. But the reality is, if, if we've been running a system where we haven't had a high level of accountability or there isn't a tracking method to it, then, then how are we going to measure the results that we're getting from that investment as a municipality? And unless you guys have something like that in place, I think that, that there's always going to be some of these unanswered questions and concerns from everybody, uh, not only the select board member, but maybe some of the residents as well. So I don't know if you can we, speak to that, Keith. I don't have printouts of it tonight, but we track our training per personnel, per event, per personnel, have been, ever since I've been on this department, <clears throat> it, it's kept on a computer tracking program that's combined with everything else. I, I don't have printouts of the so what is your train? I mean, you must have a standard training track, right? We analyze what we need need for training annually. Quinn, do you have a question? It's not so much as a question. I think it 
and I can't hear that well from the people in the audience. I think it was Jerry speaking about, uh, was it, was it Jerry? Yes. Yes. Okay. Most likely. Yeah. So, so <laughs> you know, I can, I can certainly appreciate that, you know, wanting to try new things to, to, get, in new, progress. to get new people or to try to get to figure out some way to retain and recruit people. Um, having, having done the same thing that you guys are doing for, you know, 13 or 14 years, um, it was never, it was never about, you know, how many, how many times can I, you know, go into the station to train as, as much as it was as, as the excitement of going on the calls. Right. I think, I think for all the firefighters overall, uh, you know, serving the community and, and, you know, being able to respond and do those things is, you know, a worthwhile thing that, um, you know, any, anyone can appreciate that what I found, and this is just, you know, my own personal story was, I didn't have time to train four times a month. I would have, you know, loved to have joined Berlin, for example, there's no way I can get, there's no way I could give up every Tuesday right? There's no way I can train X number of hours outside. And therefore I don't respond or I don't, you know, join. And I think that's the way a lot of the community members are. There is a ton of people that I think would love to join and help their communities, but the state of Vermont, um, the, the fire services put so much on them to continue to train all the time that it's become such a burden. People are you know, burned out and they, they just don't have the time to do it. So with that in mind, I'm not sure that I believe in my mind and I, I could be wrong. I could be very well wrong. And my personal story could be way off um, that these things won't fix the problem, unfortunately. So To me, you've actually just made a case to help out with putting some paid people in the building on the weekends, John, because that's an incentive to get you in there to do that training. And that's, you know, what's nationally, everybody's seeing a decline in volunteerism, and it doesn't matter if it's the fire service or the Elks or anything. I don't. I How agree. do you get them out? I agree, but I don't think are your paid volunteers going to are going to be the are your paid weekend staff going to be the ones that are the ones that you got to pay to get in there? Or are they going to be the people that are dedicated? I mean, you, you said he made a case for that. I don't can't imagine you're going to incentivize the people that wouldn't normally show up by paying them to show up, right? Some of the best firefighters that I worked with hated the trainings. Meaning not the, not the training, like the, the once a month, you know, you know, work on your equipment, you know, run water, do all the, all, all those types of things, but spending a weekend away from your family, um, you know, we would be required throughout the year to do those types of things. And it would get to the end of the year and you'd have a ton of people go all at the same time because no one wanted to do them throughout the year. Could be different community, could be different. It was a long time ago, um, but you know it's just again just making conversation and giving you, okay. giving you my thoughts. Let me ask you this to the board, not just you, John, obviously, but so the the fire departments here and, and Flo, maybe you want to speak to this some too. The fire departments here um, to propose the budget, and then part of part of what what happens if we if we like the budget and we want to proceed we can authorize it to go on to the ballot without having the, the requirement of the signatures um, and so I think I think that that's obviously a, a discussion um, is there I mean what what is it what does it take in the budget to or what does it look like if it what is there any way John you would be able to support this budget the way it is without requiring the signatures is there some sort of track or some sort of model or anything at all? It's gone now. I am going to speak to it because yeah. uh, I think Justin uh, touched on it and I am the liaison to the bo board uh, for the fire department. And I am in huge agreement to this. I think now more than ever, the fire department needs our help 
they're reaching out for it. They kept their budget down last year when we asked them to. And I don't think a 10.9% increase is so significant that we couldn't go forward with this. I think they've been very diligent in proposal and they have a plan in place. And just as Keith said, there's many articles out there. And the articles are saying that the fire departments all across, um, not just Vermont, but Maine, just other locations, et cetera, they're hurting. And we need to invest in our people and our resources, and I believe the time is now. Um, I think they can answer questions that we have tonight, and I think we should put all of our questions forward and then make an informed decision. Yes. Tor, you have your hand up? Uh, yes, evening. Uh, I listened to the discussion, you know, all night. And as a citizen of the town, I have absolutely no highway department, you know, the, has the same exact challenges. Our police department has the same exact okay. challenges. Every department that we have has the same exact challenges. Um, at what, you know, I just want to caution us on a on a on a you know a public policy here, or a you know a, a public direction where you know we're looking at that type of increase because, because the fire department now it's way next, it's police department next, it's so and so next, right? And the even with the cost of inflation, I don't know that the taxpayers can afford it. Um, Again, it's not a matter of support. It's just a mat. It's just for the conversation of you know how do we build how do we build a good budget here. And I understand what you're saying, John. And you are absolutely right that you know many entities will ask us for this, that, or the other thing, and uh, we are there for that purpose. Um, but in terms of what we're discussing right now, I think we should discuss it fully and ask all questions and come to a decision. Uh, tour, tour, go ahead, John. Tour was trying to say something. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as you know, Mr. Town knows, I'm definitely in favor of cutting the budget any way I can. Uh, but as a resident of the town, I have absolutely no heartburn with the uh, proposed increase in the fire department budget. Uh, every year, they try to present a you know pencil thin budget. Uh, I think the increase in the stipend and the weekend staffing is reasonable and long overdue. And, you know, I agree with everything that uh, Flo has said regarding this. Thank you. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Thank you Tour. I'm going to just say this. I personally can't get behind this budget. Not the way I'm looking at it here. I think that, that personally, I, I can get behind the weekend stipends. The weekend paid, I, the increase on the stipends with the force that you now have, I can't, I, me personally, I can't back it up because it hasn't increased enough. Um, if you had more volunteers, I'd probably say, okay. But personally, I, I think that, uh, I think it probably needs to be looked at a little better. Well, there's that. We could, the other option might be, do we have the ability to break it out? And put it to another like two two pieces on the ballot for the stipend for the fire department or justin just for clarification is this as part, is this being presented as part of the town budget or separate as part of the fire department the fire department budget okay i'm just just curious um because ultimately we want to do what's right for the fire department and the town and for clarity if it, i'm just trying i'm just thinking out loud um it was two separate things i don't know if that's the answer or not but if it was two separate things on the ballot it would give give the option uh the stipend or 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 would the fire department want to have it just be kind of all or nothing and I hear David's concerns. And at the same time, I see that the fire department is looking 
toward the future, succession planning, and they are bringing on additional volunteers. And all that comes with time. It doesn't happen overnight. I think this is a good step in that direction. And uh, I believe that we should support it. I can see where it makes sense. I'd just like to know what exactly the training track would be. And I, I would, I can see where I, it would be justified if I potentially, if I knew what, what the town was getting for that investment exactly. Um, I mean, we, we talked, talked a lot about what we could be getting, what we might be getting, but I know from my time over there, not a, sometimes there's, there's questions of accountability potentially here and there and holding people to a standard. And if, that you're going to be able to hold people to that standard. And if not, what exactly is going to happen? What exactly a training program would look like and, and how that, I mean, to me, if we do some sort of investment like this, maybe it does save money down the road on maintenance, you know, things like that. I don't know. How does, have you, would, not sure. Brad, do you have any comments? Well, that's a little. <laughs> ultimately, it's going to be up to the voters. Right. This isn't going to be part of the town budget. This is going to be a uh, uh, separate standalone item. Yep. And uh, uh, I think the town, the uh, voters will take and probably support this. Uh, it's going to be hard to take and keep the uh, volunteers here, it's going to be hard to keep, well, it's hard to keep anybody here, really. And if this will, if they, if the management of the fire uh, corporation thing is going to help, then I'm willing to support it. I also know that they are diligently looking at ways to save as well. I've been very impressed in their meetings. They're always open to new ideas. And ultimately that helps the town as well and all residents. Do you have anything you want to say, Joey? Well, I, I don't know if this is really going to address it. And I believe I, I said it earlier is, you know, we will be tracking, you know, hours of maintenance and, and administrative and training, which is going to be added to this. Um, and, and so in, in hopes of at some point, when we make that, that leap, if we're going to become a different model than what we currently are, um, we'll have a better idea of what those duties will, will be um, and, and the requirements that are going to be needed of the individual who might hold that position. Um, I, have, I have just one more question. Justin? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Keith, if if you have a new member that joins the fire department and can't commit to four trainings a month or four meetings a month and can't do all this training you, you want them to do, do you kick them off the department? If they can't meet our minimum training of, um, we have a packet, kind of what we call a probie packet for you to start being able to respond to calls. If they can't even meet that right there, then we don't even let them start to respond in the first place. If you're not making, if, if you're not, if you're making three out of the four a month, should be no problem. If you're making two out of the four of the month, that's starting to get iffy. Um, <clears throat> after that, we, work them up gradually through as, as fast as they can, but gradually through training, we highly encourage them. We can't, at this moment, we don't absolutely require them to go to the Fire One School, because it is a major commitment. It's a six, seven month long commitment of, of uh, one, usually about six meetings a month. Uh, outside in addition to the department. So we're not saying you have to be fire one in order to respond, but what we're saying is we highly encourage it. <clears throat> and that minimum probing packet, if you can't meet that, you're not even going to be responding on calls. 
How many hours uh, are these training sessions? Which ones? The four times a uh, month or the firefighter one or whatever. Or ours. Yeah, just yours. Ours, six thirty to nine thirty is okay. our times. On a different note, we see in here. That, uh, facility rentals and that shows an increase in the budget this year or an increase in revenue um, how's that going I know we, we had some discussion previously I just curious with very town EMS um, how's that going so very town EMS I think has come to a meeting and there was a discussion on the rental agreement um, they have had the rental agreement in their hands for 13 months. I have not had, and it should have been signed on July 1st. Hmm. They have been invoiced, nor have they, but yet they have not paid their first quarter. Their second quarter is coming up, and with that second quarter, they will be getting a 90-day late notice, if you want to call it, with the first quarter as well. So is there a fee associated to there is no fee agreement? written into the rental agreement. Um, a little shortcoming on our side. So what you're saying is Barry Town EMS hasn't paid any rent. They have not paid rent. And have they attempted to reach out to you and discuss why they haven't paid? Um, I have reached out to them. It's frustrating and disappointing, I'm sure. Some, yes. State of Vermont allows you to kick people out on the street this time of year. I know. I think they're, they're, they're not a resident. They're a business. <laughs> <laughs> they're a business. Yeah. Have yeah. they given any indication why they haven't paid, Joe? No. Both Carl and Chris, Lam uh, Carl Rogers um, and Chris Lamonda is well aware of this. John, you like to give advice. You got any advice for this situation? Not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, do we have any wishes in this budget? Do we have any more discussion, or are we looking to? Say we're, we're behind this. What do you what do you want out of us tonight for this budget? What would you like us to do? I'm looking for support from the select board on this budget as it stands. And I think uh, cutting it up and making two articles is a mistake. Nor and I could not get behind that. I said. Okay. I think presenting it as one. I'm in full support of it. I'm behind it. I think we can put it forward as one, and I do believe the town residents will be behind it as well. That's my own take. Okay. Is there any motions, or we don't get emotional, we'll have to move on. I make the motion that we approve the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department proposed FY23 budget with the 10.9. 6% increase as presented this evening and discussed. You're not really approving the budget. What you're doing is you're allowing them to put it on in the, in the warning. Yes, you're right. You're right. Would you like to rephrase it? You're, probably you're doing great. Right. <laughs> so moved. Yeah. <laughs> But I do believe it should be put on the on as one and not as two separate. Would you like to waive the signature requirement? Yes. 
Second. Thank you. Any discussion? I, I would just say that I agree that it should go on the, the town warning and that the, the, the residents should be able to vote on this um, the way that the fire department wants it. I do not support it in its, in its current form. Um, with that being said, um, I do support the fire department and understand the conditions they're under and hope the very best for them. And um, if they do get it, I hope that it works. Yeah, I would like to concur the same. Any additional discussion? To those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Well, wow. that's yeah. The motion. The motion was to put it on the. I, I just want to make sure the it motion was to put, was to put it, it on. It was to put it on the ballot to let the voters decide. Correct. Well, that okay, thank stands you. the way it was presented by the fire department. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you all so much. Uh, potential mask mandate enforcement by municipality discussion. We've got a package in there. We've also got uh, a letter from. Uh, Business? Yeah, Vermont Retail Grocers Association. Yeah. Uh, and you got samples from, depending on what the board wants to do, we have samples from the uh, League of Cities and Towns in regards to um, Justin. Yes. Notices. Based on the number of calls that I've received, every one of them being against the mandate. Uh, I would make a motion to table the mandate discussion until a time where we feel um, it's necessary to have. I'd second that motion. Any discussion? Sounds good to me. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> Tabled. EMD decision. Okay, so you know, we, we put this out. We've had um, a couple of uh, people express interest. Their information is in that package. Uh, it was uh, Mr. Romay and our chief has expressed interest. In addition, the chief's been pursuing some certifications and training um, along these lines, and those, uh, those courses that he's taken are also uh, in the package to reflect that. So, our chief, that gentleman right there, and then Keith had also expressed interest, right? Well, well, Keith, correct me if I'm wrong. You expressed it, interest if no, if no one for, else. <laughs> is this for a town emergency management director? Or, yes. Okay, I am not interested in the emergency <laughs> management director. Position. Okay. Just <laughs> making. Thank you for clarifying. Um, so in this. Packet. I see that there's a letter from Mr. Rome. I, did he attach any uh, qualifications? Or he did. This? They, should, they should be in there. Right? Oh, they, did I, I miss him? He's he's right. He is here. Uh, he, he is. A, would, he is in attendance yeah. as well. Go ahead, John. I I would say I've received no prompting from anyone on this uh, subject, and I I can't see the audience, so I don't know who's there. But I'll just speak um, to what I know. I know that uh, our fire chief is a, is a qualified and uh, good candidate for the position. And I know that uh, Matt, uh, Matt um, who is the chief of the Capitol Police Department um, is also a good candidate. What I know um, in, in addition to that is that Matt Romai has spent um, countless hours uh, as emergency command uh, in the Capitol complex, and it, and I've seen some of the stuff and some of the planning that they've done, and it's phenomenal. You know the the stuff that they're doing and the the things that they're thinking about, um, and so I just wanted to put that forward. That um, I didn't see the qualifications of Matt, but uh, I know him to be uh, extremely capable and uh, certainly up to the job. So I think I think this it wasn't our it was. 
Chief Pompriant was the other person interested, just so you know. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought it was Keith. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> Thank you. Um, looks like you've done a lot. A lot of training. Extensive training. Yeah, but it hasn't been fun trying to get out of this <laughs> At the very least, I would like a seat at the table, so that's why I think it's critical that the police department be involved in any kind of emergency management. Absolutely. And that was my reason for approaching Vince to begin with. Well, I think that there's probably two valuable perspectives uh, with, with between Max and yours, honestly. I mean, I think we both probably would have excellent, like, combined, it would be amazing. And I don't know, is that anything you can do a dual role on? A dual role? Yeah. I don't know, I don't know how it works, I, I, honestly. Is it something where you can have... I know that obviously you have to appoint one individual, but is there an alternate? Is there a way that you can have that shared? I don't know how the structure of it all plays out in a situation, but obviously you probably need to, to delegate authority to somebody. It does say in here that the local emergency management director or designee and one representative from each town and city in the region shall serve as the voting members of the committee. So. I take that to mean it needs to be one. Second member must be a local EMS. We have the local in the EMS community. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. you guys have authority to appoint the EMD, and then the EMD okay. is the one that works with who's the team and who, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. who's doing what role. Who puts others in the place. The others in touch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Matt, I see you're on. Do you want to talk a little bit about why you think it'd be good to have you as the EMD? Oh, I I think it would be a horrible idea. But um, uh, hey, you know, uh, Chief Fabriot and I, I mean, we we work well together now as uh, counterparts in um, local emergency services. I I I tossed an offer in there. Um, mainly to make sure that the role went the role doesn't go unfilled and you know really there's two um kind of divergent things y'all are being asked to do right now uh, one of them is to appoint a local emergency management director which you don't have to do but if you don't appoint the local emergency management director it's on you that means it's on the board and specifically on the chair of the board um if you know if you're if you don't appoint one as far as membership in the regional emergency planning committee uh chief van eiderstein i know it experience it expressed an interest in that that's two positions one is the emd or delegate of the emd and the other position is um is asked to come from local emergency services so that could be uh, police, fire, EMS, you know, what have you. But uh, the biggest question is where you want emergency management to go for the town of Berlin. Berlin's got a lot of um, high hazard occupancies, hospitals, nursing homes, uh, nursing homes, nursing homes. If I didn't mention it, nursing homes. Um, you know, you've got the Green Mountain Power Generating Station down by the Dog River. There's a lot going on in this little town. Um, and, uh, you know, having that, that comprehensive emergency management planning cycle that just, just, it goes round and round and round in circles every year. Uh, that's what makes the town and the departments eligible and being able to put in for Homeland Security grant opportunities, uh, those, those kind of things. But whatever decision you make tonight, then, you know, the next step would be to come back and you know, create a delegation of authority for the local EMD, if that's what you choose to do. And that's really where the, the meat gets, that's where the sausage gets made. What does the select board want that local emergency management director to do? Um, it could be everything, um, you know, from just making that local emergency management plan to, you know, really, um, you know, having a delegation of authority to make decisions and 
and um, and implement actions. Um, I I am happy to help out whether I'm in a position or not with the town. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm still going to be there, and uh, you know whatever the select board decides to do for the good of the town is fine with me. How can I help?
to cover basic shifts. But yeah, I, I guess my, I could be wrong, and I don't have any of the stuff in front of me, so bear with me. Mm -hmm. But in 2020, we had the same kind of shortages, didn't we? And we weren't really allowed to pull people. I don't want to say we weren't allowed, but we were very cautious about who we pulled over and when we pulled them over uh, because COVID was fairly new, right, in the FY20 budget. Yep. And we came in above revenue projections. So mm -hmm. given that this fiscal year doesn't start till July, I, I, I get there's a bunch of unknowns, but um, are you really projecting more than a 50% cut in number of people we pull over based on based on what you're seeing now? I'm just trying to be conservative, not knowing yep. where things are going to go. Well, I can speak to that, John, okay? Because I am looking that we budgeted $12,000. To date, I've received $670. That's it. <coughs> And by right. this time of year, I should be at six thousand. I received six hundred seventy. Wow. Right, but we're in we're in FY twenty two, right? And so yeah, I'm, I'm just about. yeah. And part of that, maybe I'm seeing the courts are five or six months behind mm -hmm. in dealing with traffic violations. We're just okay. now getting court hearings scheduled for tickets that were written in June and July. So it's safe to assume people know that. And they might be yeah, everybody has been contesting tickets. I've never seen this level of contesting of straightforward black and white tickets. Right. Just because they know they can put off. I, I assume that's the reason. Yeah. yeah. More than likely. So, what your point was, John, was that in in 2020, in fiscal year 2020. We received thirteen thousand seven fifty five, and you think that it's a little premature to assume? No, no. I'm just, I'm just trying to fully understand where the chief's thinking and Diane's thinking was w with that number, because I, I, you know, in my mind, and I always get the fiscal years messed up, even though I deal with them all the time. Like from February on, from you know, so we had February, March, April, May, June. I think the chief is, you know. You know, said that you know the officer count as well as some other factors are coming into play. So I'd I'd much rather be under than over. I'm just trying to you know make sure I understand uh, where we are. Okay. Any other questions on the revenue side? No. Okay. Let's go to page 22. Um, we, we did touch on this a little bit at the last meeting, but one of the big items was the, uh, what did the workers call? Yeah. Took a big hit there. And this is actual, this is an actual bill from workers comp, so I know what it's going to be. Okay. And then the health insurance side of this, is this? You know, and that's, a lot of it is because most of the people that we have, the officers we have right now are on family plan. And we, we've never had that many on family plan. It's normally been like two person or singles, but. Right, but that's not, I mean, that's not as. It's just that the, the fees, the, the right. premiums obviously are a lot more for family than they are for singles. Do you know offhand what that workers' comp number comes out to per hundred in payroll? Just out of curiosity, it's got to be up there. Yeah. Hopefully resolved. But. Yeah, but it's still going to be another few years before it's like a three-year cycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next year is going to be the worst. We have one really bad year mm -hmm. coming up. Diane, can you help me out for a minute? Uh huh. We're in FY21 now, right? We're in FY22 right now. Right, 22. Okay, so do I have an old budget here? Because I'm looking at FY21 proposed budget. I'm looking at, it just doesn't align here for me. You're looking at, 
Are you looking at page 22? Okay. Vince actually so, did the report. So, John, the report that you're looking at, the, the, the grade areas are, are information that was there prior. That's why they're shaded out. They're just kind of a reference, and, and really they were a reference for me, uh, obviously my first budget go around. So yeah, I don't, I don't have grade areas out so much. I have all you know black and white except uh, for a FY twenty one proposed in full green, yeah. and everything else is black. Yeah, which is everything left the fiscal year, fiscal year twenty one proposed to the left should be shaded out. I don't know why that didn't okay. show up. So it should be all shaded right. out. It's not on mine. Okay. Okay. So that's that one's on me. No problem. I just want to make sure I'm reading it correctly. Yeah. And you should also have an addendum report uh, in the back of that as well. Um, I can look at the cover here and tell you which one it is. For year-to-date uh, expenditures for fiscal year 22 as of November, uh, mid-November. Okay. So one more time, just just to make sure I'm reading this correctly, I apologize. Okay. FY21 proposed budget, police uh, salaries full time. Line it says 356, 253, and then in 2022, it's 326083, which in my mind sounds like about a thirty thousand dollar reduction. But when I go all the way to the right, there's a number outside the box that says 13,592. What does that number represent? Because that's usually the plus or minus. That number represents the increase right now from fiscal year 2022, which we're currently in, and the proposed budget for 2023. Okay. These colors, okay. And I think I remember if you look at the, the night shift wages below it for FY21, you'll see that that was 196,942, and then for FY22, it was 261. I got it here. Yep. Yeah. I think that was, the, we shifted that. We shifted it around shifted there, and that's why well, you're seeing that. It's the, color, it's the color scheme that was screwing me up. I'm just crossing yeah, everything yeah. with that. Thank you. I'll, I'll make a note of that for the next one. It's okay. I'm just crossing it out with my pen. We're good. Okay. So ultimately, we're looking at right around between twenty-four and twenty-five thousand dollar increase on three the budget for wages. Yeah. Three. And I'm just basing it because of union. Based on three percent. Yeah. But of course, James is in there, and he's at two percent. Hmm. Now, not specific to the police department, but why would we? This seems like a employee retention thing to me. Why would we pay, why would we give union employees a higher percentage increase than our non-union employees? Well, as a non-union employee, I'd love to get 3%. <laughs> Um, well, it just, it just seems to me like it would create some animosity between the staff. Yeah, so like, John, John let, me, let me try to answer that one. For the purposes of the budget, we used 3% um, for the for the police force because we're in the middle of negotiations um, and we really don't know where it's going to go at this particular point in time so we thought three percent was kind of middle of the road um, at least for budgeting purposes for the staff themselves um, it was just a flat two percent that we used for budgeting purposes That's how those numbers came to be. I think what Vince is saying is that based on your suggestion, we could look at all of those. <laughs> yeah. I guess what, based, on what I'm, based on what I'm trying to say is that I want to make sure, you know, we're not creating a, a problem among our own workforce here. Right. So we didn't have anybody doing the uh, health insurance buyback previously? No, we didn't. And right now we've got one, and he's going to be coming off next end of January. But we're budgeting for... Is that Pete? Yeah, he's coming off. He's going off health insurance. 
So did I have the buyback in here? Yeah, fifty-two hundred dollars. I did because at the time at the time that I did this, I was anticipating that that person would stay on. Okay, so how will that impact the health insurance line item? Um, you know, I don't think it's going to because I put it in both places. So. Not knowing, you know, I thought well. Because granted, we're still down a police officer. Right. True. Right. So this is so I based it, um, the health insurance based on you know having a full staff, and I and I put in that fifty two hundred thinking. On top of the. Yeah, full on staff. top. On top. Yeah. Yeah. Diane, uh -huh. you, you, just made, you just made the comment that we're down a police officer, we're but down. besides oh, we're down. Uh, medical leave, we're down two other police officers, we're, right? We're down. Well. <laughs> The officer free. that was on extended medical leave is no longer employed with us, so we're down two positions. Okay. And then and then we still have one out on medical leave for another three weeks. And yes. that's where he, yeah, that's yeah, why we're uh, down five. No, he's using up his sick time. So. Okay. So our full-time staffing is seven. Our full-time staffing is six. But oh, then you. With oh, with seven. me, yeah, with seven, including me. Yeah. Okay. And I'm basing the health insurance on a full staff. Mm -hmm. okay. So that 5,200, you think, could come out of this potentially? Probably it would, but I, since I don't know, I'm just trying. I'd to rather be lower in, you know, in the health insurance and, and at least have that there. Because that's that really something you just can't guess. Right. Yeah, you don't really know. Yeah, yeah it is what it is. Let that for a percentage of an increase. It's about seven, is that what it is? Seven and a half percent, seven. And I am basing it on seven percent, basically, as an increase. Okay, last year the increase was five percent, so we actually were better off. Hmm. And that comp rate makes a big part of that. That's most of it. <laughs> that is That's the biggest time. part of it. Right? And you're saying there's one more control. year of that? Was that attributed to a year that was pretty bad with comp? Two years in a row. Two years in a row? Yeah. yeah, because I got that figured out. It's like <laughs> crazy. I think I figured it around 80, 80 per 100 or something like that. Is it 80 per 100 payroll? No, it's not quite that high, but it's up there. It's an increase for sure. All right. So, mm. any more, any questions on the, the police budget? I mean, we do have the unknown um, with the contracts too, obviously, contract negotiations. Because right. that would that would do, you know, that would affect the night rate, that would affect the on call. It's going to dictate. Um, yeah, longevity. Everything. Yeah, everything. As far as payroll costs, yeah. Yep. And then um, I did also, I think I told you the last time, um, the Beamers, uh, their rate is going up. So right now we're at 6.25, and I think it's going up to 6.5 or something near that. So it's definitely going up on the employer end and the employee end. Right. And that was year. what, and you factored that in already? Yes, already. I did. Thank you. Okay. So what? What other we want to want Tim? I can bring you Tim in for the next meeting. And then we can do the office stuff. Yep, we do the office that, stuff that's pretty tonight. Quick. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So where do we get on that? Do you have any more questions on the police budget? Okay. Yeah. Jack and me? Everybody. Not just you. Fine. Okay, just making sure. No, I'm good. Okay. What page does the office begin on, Vince? Are you talking general expenses? Yeah, because you want to start talking now. Back to the thing later. I'm going to do it on my computer. 21 is general, general expenses. General expenses is 21. 21. Page 21. Or are you talking uh, administration? Uh, both, right? Well, okay. no, no, wait a second. I think we want to go and talk about zoning and DRB and all those others. 
You want to go to the beginning of it. Okay. Sixteen, oh, fifteen, fourteen. Fourteen. Assessing. Right? Mm -hmm. You want to go to assessing? Oh, 11. Is it 11? Okay. Our administration, right? At the very 10. Beginning. On 10. Okay. That's I don't seem to have those pages. Okay. You should have one page mm -mm. No, mine bumps over. Mine goes from. <laughs> Okay, so 10, 11. Does everybody else have these? Yeah, I've got, I've got them. I got 10. Okay, I'll keep looking. Maybe it just got out of order. Okay, because on that one, do you have page 10, John? I don't know, but, but that's okay. I'll look on with Brad. Okay. All right, let's we'll start. Okay, so like I said, you did base the wages on a 2% increase um, per um, And I, let's see, and then like I told you before, we put, uh, factored in that we'd have a, you know, maybe a full-time person to back up myself and, and Vince. So that's extra in there. Um, and now last year, it's, you know, when we had the budget for last year, um, after the budget had been approved, and that's when you had, um, upped the amount for uh, the town clerk and put Corinta full-time. Mm -hmm. So that was not reflected in 2022 budget. So in 2023, it looks like it's a higher increase, but actually it's only 2% of what they were actually given. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. That makes total sense. Yeah. So the only significant increase in this is the extra, extra office person, support Extra person, and staff. I'm assuming you know, I'm going with 40000 I don't know if we can get somebody for 40000 or not. Right. It just seems like a you know, halfway decent number. And then just on a discussion item for that, we've been tracking times and all that, so we should mm -hmm. have a good idea of how yeah, we'd be able to utilize that in a and how it works. Absolutely, yeah. Like, well, I've given them a month. Yeah. But the hard part with me is every month my job changes significantly. And my job, like every February, probably is the same. Every March is probably the same. But that given month, that you know, that's so I'm not doing absolutely everything that I do all the time. It's just that events does have what I've done for that particular month. Okay. And I did increase the postage for all departments because I do think that postage is going up. And on top of that, I didn't know if maybe we were going to be required to mail out ballots, which is expensive. Has there been any more discussion on the ballots and the need for no, mailing? The, the, the last discussion that I had was with the um, chairman of the school board. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was uh, asking for contact information to the board members to reach out. Now, mm -hmm. I haven't had any feedback if she's reached okay. out or not okay. to discuss that. I haven't heard. Okay. So. But that's why I increased the postage. Okay. <coughs> Probably going to happen. Are we set with page 10 or did we go to page 11? Oh, Justin? Yes. Go ahead. Um, I wanted to point out that it kind of tags on to what John had said when discussing the police budget as far as increases. As far as their, I think everybody, I mean, when I say everybody, all businesses, all organizations are really needing to look harder at how to retain employees. We have, we've had problems as far as police, you know, way before the pandemic. But just now with, I believe I heard the other day that with 8,000 people on unemployment, there are still 20,000 job openings in the state. And people are making offers of having um, bonuses, you know, just for, for coming on. And we really need to look hard at making sure we're doing the best we can for all employees. And when, uh, when John said about, didn't want any animosity between you know, departments and all on the whole team, 
I have to say, last year when you guys, which I very much appreciated, made me full time, it wasn't with an increase in pay. I mean, it was a 2%, but yet somehow you guys also made the decision to, shall we say, right size Rosemary at like a 14.4% increase. And that doesn't go over really well as far as, you know, willing to right size one employee and you're not necessarily looking at the others. I don't know if Diane would advocate for herself, but she's had a boatload put on her and, you know, it's rarely gone a day and yet it doesn't seem like she has had her salary right size or a bonus or anything to reflect all that she's done. And as I say, very appreciative that I was made full time and I think that's worked out really well as far as coverage. But last year when I gave you guys a sheet that showed what various town clerks and assistant town clerks are making, I was low man on the totem pole and I was basically told, oh, well, you're getting more money now. Well, no, I'm earning more money for working more hours. But I'm still the low man on the totem pole and these Vermont um, League of City and Town numbers, I mean, any way you compare at anything comparable, either population size or hospital towns or whatever, there's a big difference in what others are making and what I'm making. So I, I just have to take the time to, to put in a plug and, and make sure you guys are considering it. If you're gonna have all that information from the Vermont League of City and Towns, I should hope you're looking at it and considering it. So. That is addendum four in the package that she's referring to as well. Mm -hmm. Which they're not all comparable. I mean, there's a wide variety, and their bottom line number is right as far as they figured in people's stipend money, and so it makes it look like people make make a huge amount. Well, they don't, but yep. Yep, I think we're just in our initial stages, but I think that's going to be a topic. Of conversation as far as like John brought up a valid point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's not just what the hourly wage is, it's it's our you know, what are the benefits? I mean health benefits are, are good, but are there any other perks or anything that can be done again to really work on keeping people and I and I I mean everybody, you know, whether it's highway, we've seen other towns desperate and you know, are they gonna offer something that's gonna take away any of our guys? You know, to get them to another town? Police officers, the rest of us? I mean, it's, it's really, you gotta be thinking about everywhere. And it's not even the, the road crew going to another town, it's some of these excavation businesses and these guys can operate trucks. I, I, I just talked to somebody today that, what, they started paying a dump truck driver Boy, I'm glad I kept my CDL because I might consider it. It's crazy what the what's going on out there. And another girl I talked to today walked into a local business. They gave her five weeks paid vacation from day one. Whoa. <laughs> five weeks. Exactly, and I mean the from knowledge, day one. the knowledge base that any of us have from being here for at least. A year or two, just that phase means a lot. If you've been here longer, it's even greater. So sure, you might be able to find somebody else to fill the role, but you're not going to fill the knowledge that takes time to train up on. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing a fantastic job. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Yep. And you're extremely respected and valued. Well, it's, it's really takes a whole team. It's a team of people, and mm -hmm. it, it puts more workload on whoever's left if you if you lose somebody. And that's what we went through last year, as far as when we lost a town administrator, and having that role vacant for months made a huge difference on other people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for speaking up to your concerns. Yes. Are there other questions on that page? Um, sort of, not really, but 
um, the uh, assistant town administrator. I see that's in there, and there's obviously multiple sources for the income that that in there. Yes. And so then, I want to get a good handle on that. Okay. I, I didn't give that to you. I thought I had. I, you did it, but I'm okay, looking at I, I want the board to have a good understanding as we go through yeah, the Yeah, because you're not going to, you know, you're going to see the assistant uh, town administrator portion here. But the, um, the Utilities Commission gives him money for water and sewer, and they're the ones that vote on that rate of pay. Right. Well, I can give you another breakdown. I thought I had, but I can give it to you again. Thank you, Dad. I just might have, I probably misplaced it. Okay, well, I'll give it to you again. <laughs> Thank you. I can get that for you very quickly. Thank you. But that, and where does that come into play in the budget? Okay, so those two other pieces you're not going to see, because that's a budget that they calculate on their own. Right, but well, it goes in with our budget, so we'll see it somewhere. Right? Well, it doesn't go in with our budget, because when I do the payroll, I his portion, which includes overtime, okay, so his portion and the overtime, that he puts in, I put against a general fund. And then um, the sewer and water, I put to those particular departments. So if you were to look at, like, when I do the payroll, there's a certain section. Right. And his, so his is split up every pay period. Right, and it's split up, because we, I, I think I asked some questions about if we were accurately, or, like, recording, mm -hmm. which we're working on with the time card stuff, right? And yeah. Like, okay. So yeah, because see what's happening with the sewer and waters. I'm going by a certain amount. Right. So in other words, he's allowed right, let's say percentage. twenty-five thousand, you know, for sewer. I'm just dividing that up by twenty-six. And right. The same thing with water. So but we're gonna have a better handle on that moving forward. Okay. okay. All right. I think we can go to the next page. So the assessing department, I don't, do you want me to speak to these things? Jen, That's Jen? fine, yeah. Okay. Uh, because, you know, I, the contract assessor, I put them for a, a larger amount in 2022. They have not been increasing their amounts. That they, you know, the contract we have has not been increasing. So I'm assuming at some point it will increase. What's the length of their contract? Hmm? What was the length of their contract? Ah, you know, that's a good question because I think it might be three years has probably gone beyond that. And but the contract is it's just for a certain amount, and then they have their they 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 have the ability to put the cost of living in there, and they've just not done that to us. Okay, they've just been going at the same rate. There was no renewable, I mean, extensions on that contract, was there? So I think we need to probably all get Vince and look at that I'll again and maybe rebid it. And their supplies, I think I've... And we provide their computer? We do. We have two computers in that one. And a printer. And, of course, all of the um, software that they need for the computer. And I did put in for computer expense because we were talking about replacing all of the uh, desktops or laptops. And right now, I'm the only one that has a laptop that I'm using. Uh, we took off my desktop. We could look at it. it was really old. It wasn't working right. And I had the laptop that we'd gotten from the elder. And so we plugged that in. Everything is working fine on that. So, uh, you know, I don't know if the others are going to want to go laptops, but it certainly is working for me. And laptop, I believe, is a less expensive alternative. And you don't have, you don't have to have the UPS, which is expensive. When that goes, that's 400 bucks. And you don't have to have the uh, server box. And you do have a docking station set up? Mm -hmm. I do. And the plan is to standardize it across the staff. Oh, yeah, so I like it. Yep. Maintenance is easier. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. would be easier. And this and way, if we want to bring it home, we could, it's a lot too. More efficient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 We have talked about that. And so is there any questions on the assessing? Because that really isn't a big... No. Sure. Next? Did you have a question? No, but yeah, meetings. Page, page 12 is meetings and elections. Now, this year we're going to have an election in August, and because isn't there uh, a primary and then in November? Yes. It's obviously not presidential, but still, there will be more meetings this year than there mm -hmm. was last. So I, I think I increased that. Mm. Great.
And we have, yeah, I mean, that's pretty self explanatory. Insurances. Okay. Which we've already sort of discussed. About the we have, right? now this, this is a, the portion of the insurances for the, you know, for the town offices. Okay. So ours are, you know, Far less. ours are very low, fortunately. Yep. The health insurance that has increased just because um, I'm talking, we're talking about maybe putting on another person, maybe family plan. And then um, when Corinne went full time, you know, she's on the insurance. So obviously, when we planned the 2022 budget, I did not anticipate that. So the 2023, I think, is realistic. All right, so we're looking at a $33,000 increase. But that's if you were to have a family, you know, another person on family plan. Mm -hmm. And then, um, like I say, we have a couple of us on a single plan, and I think Vince is on two person. How much does the family plan cost the town? I think it's twenty-eight thousand a year, or right around that. So, pretty much all the five thousand and that increases uh -huh. of the thirty-three is yep. based on a family plan. Yep. Wow. Well, okay. okay. And of course, FICA expenses are going up because we're and we're adding money to the payroll. Yeah. And the Fuda Suda expense, um, that's actually gone up. This is um, the unemployment that municipalities have to pay. And we get that through the leagues of cities and towns, and they have gone up in rates because so many towns were using them. Um, so all of our fees went up this year. I mean, not substantially, but they all went up. The Fuda Suda looks like a decrease, small decrease. Yeah. And st yeah, because last year, oh, I guess last year I anticipated something else. If you go to Fuda Suda, some of the other departments, they went up. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, disability insurance. We, we are on a new insurance plan now as far as disability and life insurance. And the disability portion went up, but the life insurance portion went down. Oh. So, but we are with a different place. And still to the least cities and towns. But of course, in, in this, Scenario, I'm showing it higher because I'm talking about adding another person. Same with the pension line item. Yep. And gym fees because everybody would be, you know, that's mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. a benefit. So mm -hmm. if I, and I'm anticipating everybody's going to the gym, and reality, none of us are going right now. Or none mm -hmm. of us are going right now. Right. <laughs> okay. And the general insurance did go down a little bit for this department, which is I'm not sure why, but it did. Zoning is the same, DRB is the same. And the health insurance buyback that stays pretty regular for free. That is, uh, uh, Rosemary's on that. Okay. Town clerk is on that. Okay. Yep. Very well. Yeah, I think zoning always kept exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So the planning commissions asked for a twenty thousand dollar increase for they the have planning part consultant. of it I think was for they wanted to put that gym thing that you put outside at the mall the consultant, the twenty thousand? Yeah, there's twenty thousand but then there's additional twenty I think I put forty thousand in there. Right. Yeah. I right. put forty thousand in twenty twenty three. And twenty of it was for consulting because for the town center. But right. the other twenty I thought they wanted to use they were talking about the there was a grant that we applied yeah. for, right? So yeah. the grant would come in as a revenue and then out as an expense. Is that? It would, although we'd have to have a match. I mean, we still have to have Some, substantial yeah. amount of money. In there. So that's, but that, that's what they asked for. Mm -hmm. So I put in whatever anybody asked. Yeah. Yep. Rec board, sixty-five hundred. Yeah, I remember. Um, we talked. Uh, and we talked about that. I think Tim is on. Tim Shea. Oh. Tim, are Tim. Tim, are you on from the rec board? You're on mute. If you can hear us, Tim. No, oh, he's S H E A. Oh. That's S H A Y. So I remember. I think that there was fifteen hundred dollars that would be swim lessons, and then five thousand was. Oh shoot. Well, we did. We did. A portion for the oh no that would have 
that one. You know, actually, I think that we talked about some of it. Coming I think out that, that five. That, yeah, I think he wants to do it in 2022 and not 2023. I think we talked about that. Uh, no, we did talk about it being we because we asked what they would do yeah. between now and then. Yeah. And once we hit June of next year, we're oh, that would okay, 23, I right? I guess I didn't hear that. As I recall, because I asked okay. when we we talked about the uh, the nets for the hockey rink. Yeah. Yeah. We also I, I had asked about when they planned on spending the money, okay. and he had I said you plan on spending it really before July or whatever, okay. you know, and that so that it would fall into our. Okay, I guess I just didn't hear that, that part of it. Okay. Wasn't that there was some money? Still available? There is. They have a reserve of like sixty-five hundred. Yeah, that's yeah. There was yeah. money that was still available to get them through till that right. time frame, and then yeah, we we're going to yeah. put that. And then we had also had a discussion a little bit briefly, I think, because we had had the the concept was it the conservation commission and the rec board were kind of operating under the same budget currently. Uh, yeah. Because and, and how? Well, no, the rec board does have it. It is separate. No, but well, it was, but they the concept. Uh, but yeah, as far as the committees, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, there's some clever. Yeah. Right, but there's two distinguished pots of money all of a sudden. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. And we put no money into it last year, so that pot of money didn't grow. <laughs> exactly. But it's nice to see that they're actual. It's nice to see that they're doing some stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really good for the town. Um, cemeteries. Yeah, no I mean, it's mostly mowing, but at some point, I think that some of the cemeteries need some work. Yeah. You go to cemeteries more than I do. And we got an update from Berlin Corner Cemetery Committee lately. Remember when they came into the board and talked about it? Not recent. I don't know. Jeff had come back at all and talked about it, but they had talked a while back, and I don't know. They said they felt like it might have been unsustainable, but, but then they started getting the, uh, the appropriation. appropriation funds, and yeah. I just was curious how how that was going for them. Would you like me to uh, reach out and ask him? Yeah. Come in and give you an update? Yeah. I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was a that was a potential down the road where he said he might have to ask the town to take it over, as you recall, and that would be something that would be a bit of an expense we'd yeah. like to have a heads up on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're probably gonna want to come in anyway if they want to go on the right? Yeah. Oh, they, they don't, don't need, need the appropriation. They don't have no. to. They, don't they can get signatures. For, right? If you've been approved and for, the amount doesn't change, oh, you, you don't stay need, right on it. All you have to do is put in a letter oh, to request it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Isn't that nice? Yeah. That's super nice. <laughs> <laughs> but several, several organizations have been bringing the petitions because they wanted to increase the amount. Okay. Just to let you know. Yep. They heard how generous Berlin is. Mm. Extremely, so nice. <laughs> All right. Oh, taxes and assessments. Yeah. And as far as the ambulance service, I'm basing that on the contract. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. So and that was a sixteen thousand dollar increase. Yeah. Yeah. Because it goes per capita. And yep. not for capital, not for year three year contract. Each year it goes up. It was where do we stand on that letter increase that he was requesting after nothing more said? No. The others are very close with their work. I guess I'm a little confused on that one. Okay. I'll sort on the aim one still because we got a letter after the three year contract and that was where the increase was or was the increase? It was the new, what was the new contract. The proposal. New contract. New contract. But that had an increase based yes. on rent increase. Yes. And then so. No, that had an increase based on a per capita. And then they came back to us based on the rent increase after, didn't they? No. 
It was in that contract. It was. I remember. It was, it was That's why I'm saying I did. That this is not a dead issue, as far as I'm concerned, because weren't they supposed to? There was. They haven't come back. You heard the chief, right? Because they they haven't come back with a new contract yet. It's my understanding. Well, That's my understanding as well. To town, yeah, to the fire department or us. Well, he was referring to the lease contract. Mm -hmm. But okay, again, well, I'm still confused. I, well, I thought it was. Still, so if we're not under I'll go back and look at the meeting. I, don't think I thought it was pretty clear that I was the board had said they right. they weren't going to entertain any, any increase. increase. Correct. And I thought right. that was that based. Point. That's my understanding. This number here I is, a, is an increased number, I believe. I, I'm just yeah. I'm I'm unclear on it, but I'm thinking it is mm -hmm. based on. So, you know, I don't think that was a dead. I'll look at the minutes. Right. I'll look at the contracts. You know, a yeah. solved issue. Right. Yep. Okay. So, um, yeah. point. Very good point, David. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I know we're going to have, we got, I want to get through a little bit of this, and then I know we're going to have an executive session. We'll get Scott waiting, so we yep. should probably mm -hmm. get through the next what we got. Town yeah, office expenses and general, 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 general expenses, work. and then we'll call it call it a night on this and go. Yeah, I don't think the town office is. It's. You know, I don't think the expenses are up except for the web page, and we know that because we now we have, we're having a new. Um, we have a, a new. Host web page host. Yes. Okay. There we right. go. <laughs> We've gone from the old one that we had that we yeah, didn't have yes. access yeah. and real control over to uh, a new one called Squarespace that we're developing right now with the with the intern and, <clears throat> and in house. <Yeah. clears throat> we hope to continue the intern, uh, another intern mm -hmm. for the next semester. Um, our original intent was to try to have it up and running by Christmas, but we're not going to make it. But shortly after the new year, we're going to start rolling out that new. Um, website great yeah and then we have equipment contracts which took a substantial increase yes because we get the polymorphic as part of that that's included in there yep. okay yep that is and the maintenance we did increase because we really would like to do some repairs here some painting or something mm -hmm. we really need to did you that Probably 2,000 is not, is not enough. <laughs> yeah. No. Do we want to go to general expense and then be done with it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I did increase the legal services because I just think that, you know, with the union contract and stuff too, and some of the other things are going on. Well, we do. Yeah, that's the whole thing. The more we have sense. going on, the more it costs us. Mm -hmm. uh, CPA services, I did bring that up. Number one, we're going to have to put an RFP out on that because I think our three-year term is up. However, in the next two to three years, I am going to continuously be in um, a single audit, which costs more money. That costs like $1,000, $1,500 more. Because of all the grants we're getting, mm -hmm. we'll be doing that for the next two to three years anyways. We okay. did one this last year, and that will increase, that will continue for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Because for ever, for if you have more than seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in grants or loans, that includes loans, you get a single audit. So. Right. So we'll have the reason. audit. We'll have the money we got this year. We'll have the money we'll get next year. year. Probably one more the year after. Yeah, and that's just you know we'll have a regular audit, but then there's that single audit which. Right. Is they just need a horrible amount of information. They take a lot of your time. Yeah. Yeah. A tremendous, tremendous mm. amount of time. Could I ask two questions? Sure. I missed thinking of something. Back on the assessment, is there money being put aside for a new time library assessment? If that That's a different happen? place. That's a but different place. Is there... No. Yeah, yeah, we're, not, we're still getting it from the state, but we're not putting any in from the town. We're not. And as a matter of fact, I think the next time around, I will talk about that because Barrytown recently did a reappraisal. Re they put it in their newsletter. I just think the information is, is very pertinent to us. Because I think right now we've got like, I think $200,000 in that, if I'm correct. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know a town wide 
know, assessment would be. However, we would not be having the um, mobile homes in there. We've already done that. I, think, I do think we're going to be. I think the last time we did it was 120 to 130 thousand. And I think Barry Town, which has more, you know, more houses and stuff than us, I think there's like 250 or something. Yeah. You know, but I will bring in that newsletter because it just gives us a good idea of where we're going to be. Five minutes away from where we're doing that case, right? And one other question. I was wondering, in looking through this, I could, no, other than that forty thousand um, dollars for a new position, I was thinking I don't really see anything that speaks to the conversations that you had at the special board meetings recently. And so I don't know if that's a conversation that's still going to happen as far as when you're looking at priorities and growth and buildings and so forth, is there a planned conversation to have before this becomes finalized? Before this budget becomes finalized? Yeah. Um, well, at this point in time, we've had some of the conversations. We're, we're kind of, I think, picking off things that, that little pieces at a time. So we've done some sort of tracking was a big thing for, you know, just staffing and all that, um, which Vince is working on gathering up the rest of the data, but we realize that there's a shortage here and there and we need to, we need to get that, so that's why we added that piece in as far as the, the, the structures, you know, the, 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 the structures that we're talking about. I think we, we have some more work to do on that. I don't know if that's something that we'll immediately be able to, to go after. Um, well, just tied into that, I was wondering, there was talk about um, whether or not there would be a question regarding the fire department on the at town meeting. But my question is, will there be anything about buildings, whether it's, whether it's giving people a choice, which may not exist, as far as do you want to see a building over at the uh, town center? Do you want to see this one added on to? But like I said, maybe that's not really a choice from what I understand with the downtown designation. I don't know, I don't really know how that all works, but. I think we have to have something over there, um, a commitment level. And I think it makes sense for us to eventually have something over there if it is kind of a hub, so. But so then doesn't there need to be some kind of question to the taxpayers because you can't do really anything like that without taxpayer approval, right? Right, but I don't think right now is the time where we can even address that because I don't know where we, what we, we would even know what we would do over there, quite honestly. So I think it's something that would more or less be tailored at the moment. We're going to ask. Yep. You know, I might stop coming to these meetings again. <laughs> <laughs> better for my health. All right. Uh, approval of license permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 22-12 for payroll from December 5th, 2021 to December 18th, 2021, paid on December 22nd, 2021, in the amount of $55,869.96. Also payable warrant 22G10 with checks 21642 to 21675 in the amount of $379,487.18. Also November general journal entries, November budget status report, trial balance report, and delinquent tax notice report. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of minutes for meeting October 18th and December 6th. I make the motion to approve the minutes of October 18th, 2021 as presented. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I make the motion to approve the Monday, December 6, 2021 min minutes as presented with one exception on page three, um, second section down for ice rink goals. 
just just a change in the verbiage there. But other than that, um, just that one change. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Round table. Uh, looks like Vince has a packet for us right here. Just, those are my two items. Uh, the first one is the um, Central Well Solid Waste Management District are required to provide the uh, budget information and update to, to uh, the select boards each year. Mm -hmm. This is their update okay. for, for the board. So just for information for you. Um, and the second one is uh, just an update, there's just information um, on the security system for the building here uh, and the police that we talked about uh, a couple of meetings ago. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the quote came in uh, for what that would look like. I had to break it down uh, into different, I think there's four pages here to show each area separately as well uh, to make it a little more clear. So there's specific things for the police department, then there's a combination for the department and the town office, and also for the town garage in there. So do we, is there a way to put that out? We got a good idea, but do we have, do we have to put this out on our RFP if we were to do? This is just not How much is it? Uh, total is a little over uh, 14, 15,000. Yeah, a little over 15,000. Yeah, we're at, we're at a 5,000 dollar. Yeah, threshold. Yeah. So, so how many companies do this kind of stuff? You'd be able to find three? You need for the lock. Yeah. No, it's not no, for security, security system. It's security system. system. There's video cameras, it's so the Wi Fi. Well, that, 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 yeah, there's more than you'd three. Be able, you'd be able to be fine growing three. I mean, we're not that far out there. So so we get it, try to get a couple more with my Yeah, I can, uh, I can go out to RFP with it if you like. And you got one right at the bottom of the hill in Montpelier, too. Uh, took over the old Spooners building. I have a layer of complexity with the system that we have. What's that? We see a lot of layer of complexity, so mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty. That's a. No, I can do it. We kind of have to. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Anybody, uh, any round table, anybody? John? Brad? Hello? I just wanted to thank Diane for her overview on the budget and the time you extended. Thank you. Thank you. Were you saying something for round table, John? Oh, I just had uh, one quick question, and I'm just I'm looking through the budget. I just can't find the number. Diane, what is the overall uh, percentage off in the budget as proposed right now or as drafted? I think it's like seven or eight percent. Seven point four, I think, John. Yeah. I know. Okay. Thank you. Anything, Dave? No. Okay. Um, entertain a motion to enter executive session for contract discussion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 